When you talk about uh, uh, knowing when water pressure in a building, per se, falls or whatever, you're just integrating on top of already building systems. Is that how you're, you're doing this? Or are we talking, you are going from the ground up to monitor these systems? I mean, are you just going into an open source and, and getting your information from that and that alerts you? Uh, it, it's not an open source, it's proprietary, which is part of the magic of this, of this program. <clears throat> um, there, are, there are sort of canned monitoring systems out there that observe, but you have to buy box. And these proprietary boxes, you need one in your uh, location that you monitor and one at the client location. They're very expensive and they're proprietary. So when a client buys that, they're stuck with this box or this hardware. Our system doesn't need any boxes. It's all software based and it's engineered to work with, with any of the customer systems uh, with with the software and hardware interface, not 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 a box. So uh, to to go directly to your question, it depends. Um, I've been in this business for 35 years. Uh, I've done hundreds of security surveys, and I'm amazed at what buildings don't have in terms of systems. A lot of buildings don't know when their water pressure drops. Believe it or not. So we're going to run into some facilities that are very mature. Um, and and it, John's Controls does a lot. Um, in, in fact, I, I heard a number, and I can't remember from where, but they do work with 75% of Iowa schools um, with their uh, HVAC heating uh, uh, and, and, and all those systems that surround that. So um, they're going to know how to hook in those systems uh, as well as systems that there's no interface for right now. And that's part of where the risk and threat survey comes. We're going to help customers determine what's important and what's going to be a kill shot to, to their organization. And uh, are we talking, uh, have you started this with any of your clients yet, or do we have a hard launch date, a soft launch? How is this working? Uh, or is it already in place as we speak? <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is the hard launch. Uh, we wanted to give the press the first opportunity. Uh, we've had a very good relationship with the press, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's a big deal, not only because it's literally a new way of doing security that has a global reach that will bring money literally from all over the world into Iowa, create a lot of jobs, um, uh, but it's a cool solution, and, 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 and it's something we believe people will want to know about. I mean, we, we certainly believe it's newsworthy. Um, and I don't know much about other security firms. Is this a first in the nation, first in the world kind of system? I have, do we see this anywhere else? It's the first in the world. It literally is the first in the world. There is no other solution that does what this does in the way that it does it. Are there any companies right now that are implementing your program? No, we have not even approached anybody because this is literally the launch. Um, if, if you folks put something uh, on your news, this is the first that the people will have heard of it. Okay, now, let me make sure I understand this correctly. You'll, you'll have cameras set up, right? So there will be hardware. Yes, among other, okay. among card access, alarms, monitoring points. Okay, but it, it will just be It'll also be interactive in the sense that you mentioned the garage. Somebody could actually come over and intercom and say, stay away from that woman. Correct. Turn the lights on, make noise, call the police. With a water leak, would you be able to shut it off? Or I mean, Well, that's, we could, but that's where the response comes in. Uh, most of our locations and most of the locations will still need people but maybe a patrol response as opposed to tradi a traditional guard, um, you know, sitting in that building. And so really it's sort of like a, a, a proper risk management is sort of like a phone number. It all has to be there and it has to be in the proper order to work. And so what we're doing and, and how we save money is we're leveraging technology and combining highly paid, highly trained people to provide people better security than they have, and because we're leveraging a new system, we're saving them a lot of money. 
And you know, it's, it's, it's really important to understand too, that the same threats we face today are not the same threats we're gonna face tomorrow. And we help a lot of our customers deal with that right now. Is, is okay, yeah, we got yesterday, but how about tomorrow and the next day and the next day? And, and so as we get intelligence alerts, and as we get, um, get other uh, restricted information, we can help our customers stay uh, ahead of, of threats uh, that, are, that are impending. And this system gives us the agility to make, um, to, to make very, very rapid adjustments. Um, for instance, if there's somebody that a customer is fired and um, uh, the person has threatened to come back and, and hurt people or may be a threat, we can be watching the parking lot remotely. And if we see that person come in the parking lot or on the property, we can literally remotely initiate a lockdown of a facility, literally. And so when I talk about remote viewing's reach being endless, it, it's like sort of, uh, you, you know, you, you, you name it and, and we'll tell you if it can work or not. Um, a building might have four or five security officers and they may need security on site, but they may be able, get, be able to get by with one or two people and not five or six. So you're saying all this technology that you're gonna put in place in these buildings, um, it might cost more to start, but it's more cost effective <coughs> over the long run. It, it may, but, um, th but the equipment is a capital expense, which means it's depreciable. So in essence, with depreciation, it doesn't cost the company anything by the time they do the tax write-off on it. Labor is not depreciable. So what we're doing is really leveraging technology. And um, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because another important aspect with this system is that it was critical for us to get a system that worked with, um, with, with what customers had. Uh, I, I go back to the few other uh, monitoring systems that are out there. Everybody has to buy new hardware. This system will work with people's existing uh, cameras, their existing monitoring systems, their existing card access. Now, it, you know, there, there are exceptions if somebody has a 40-year-old camera, probably not gonna work with that. But uh, I didn't invent it, but there's a, a name called hardware agnostic. And our system is hardware agnostic, meaning it doesn't care what camera is, is there existing. It'll work with it and it'll, it'll interface with it. So the, the expenditures that people will have to make is simply the investment between where they are and where they need to be to gain adequate security. So they don't have to scrap their whole system. And one of the nice things about John's controls is they have very, very good leases. So people can lease the equipment um, and, and if they do that, it's still going to save them raw dollars uh, immediately. And, and, and again, uh, they will increase their security effectiveness. Now, I kind of asked before, but you didn't really answer it, but can you use this at home? Yes. Okay. It can literally be used anywhere. And, and, and we do anticipate uh, some homes um, that, that will want it. Uh, probably at, probably outside, but uh, uh, yes, a absolutely. Um, going back to the convenience store slangs, in the first situation where the woman was shot, um, you're saying if your security system had been in place, there would have been someone watching um, <coughs> basically everything that happened, and you would have been able to prevent the next one from happening? Well, it, it, it's very difficult to have absolutes, but, but the odds are, first of all, there's the issue of deterrence. If we have signs posted and people know that a site is under surveillance, that in and of itself is going to prevent a lot of crime. A lot of crime, because people know that somebody's watching. But let's say that the person is, is a kook, which I would agree this guy is, because who would do that to people? Um, but, but let's say he comes in and let's say he does commit the crime, okay? 
at minimum, at minimum, we're going to be able to get the police in route immediately. We're going to be able to get them pictures and video immediately. So they're going to be able to interdict him very, very, very quickly. The second issue is that a lot of people are shot and stabbed, but they don't die right away. You know, they, they bleed out. And so through getting, uh, through, through being, through the information being actionable, that is, we see it live, EMS uh, may have been able to get there and save her, as opposed to having her lay there for, you know, God knows how long, only to have a, a, a coworker find her. So we're not going to be able to prevent everything, but the system is going to definitely have a, a preventative aspect to it. And for those instances that do occur, we're going to be able to get um, a rapid response. And, and so that's the big difference. You know, I would have liked to, uh, I, I would like to think uh, both those ladies' lives could have been saved. Reality is I don't know. Odds are uh, it could have had a much better outcome. But in fairness to those stores, remote viewing unfortunately wasn't available then, but it is now. And when you, it sounds to me from what you're saying that you're gathering with, with, with your virtual viewing just a boatload of information. I mean, from the building to, uh, to having a picture, video, all that other stuff, in communication with law enforcement. You've got just a ton of, of data and a lot of it that you guys would deem as pertinent. How is that data going to get to dispatchers to get close to real time to the squad car for that responding officer? Because uh, that, that seems to me, you have all this information, now you gotta shove it through a quick funnel as fast as you can to get to your man on the ground. Yep, <clears throat> that's a great question. And there's a couple aspects to that. First of all, um, one of the engineering magics of our system is to push a lot of information very rapidly through even a minimal internet connection. And it has to do with the compression and decompression. And, and that's sort of, if you will, the magic, you know, that, that we've been able to engineer through this. Um, the, the squad car actually could have uh, software in it, uh, and we could actually forward it to them live. We could forward it to them, um, the, the, the dispatcher, the police dispatcher, and they could forward to them live. Um, you know, we, we, we certainly, the first thing we do is make a, make a call. And you'll see in our, um, uh, the RVOC uh, that we have many stations. And we have sort of a cascading system so that we can handle emergencies. Because we're going to have a lot of routine monitoring, but it's obviously critical to handle emergencies. And every one of those stations has a, um, a, a phone, a two-way radio, and, and the robust ability to email and interact. On top of that, uh, we have a, a state-of-the-art Tanberg video teleconferencing unit uh, that we can literally reach out to any law enforcement agency, Homeland Security, and, and other agencies live and pump video right over that. So um, uh, locally, uh, we also have two-way radios but, but there are a, a, different, a, a lot of different modalities. I know um, uh, the state is, is working on an interoperability project that, that other states like Minnesota have that are a, a voice over IP solution uh, and, and, and also has a data and video component. As that matures, uh, that will help us set up even a quicker platform, uh, a probably more seamless platform. The other issue is that we're going to integrate GIS uh, in with what we do so that geographical information system for our clients will interface with public GIS systems. So that water line, we know where it goes when it leaves the building. You know, so, so if we need to call the water company and say, hey, can you shut this main off, um, we, you know, we can, we, we can, we can do that.